Hello everyone. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to set up gyro aiming in Horizon Zero Dawn. Joystick works. This is joystick. Gyro aiming works. This is gyro aiming. It feels good. It works good. Um, vibration works. You have the Xbox 360 button prompts, which is not ideal, but you know, it works. Heavy attacks work. I don't know how much of a pain this was to get working. The tubes I had to jump through you will see in the profile setup. I'm going to put profiles in the description, hopefully. You should be able to download them, just drag them and drop them into DS4 Windows. But if it doesn't work right out of the box, or if you want to configure it yourself for whatever reason, I'm going to show you go through every step of the way on how to get it to work, how to set up these profiles from scratch. It's actually two profiles that you need to set up. Um, they, they interact in a really strange way, so I'm going to walk you through it step by step. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to DS4 Windows. And I will provide a link for the exact version that you want in the description. And we want to go to the releases. And I am using 2.1.22 and I will link this in the description. So you can just click on that and I'm going to use the 64 zip. Give it a second, there it goes. Grab that. I'm gonna put that on the desktop. You can put it wherever you want. That's gonna be your installation folder. You're going to have a process when you launch it. It's gonna give you steps that you need to do. You can just go through those. Uh, you might have to restart your computer after doing them. You might have to restart DS4 Windows. You'll be able to get through it. I use the program folder. I don't know why the text doesn't show. Just use the program folder. It means that it's portable. You don't have to worry about it. We're not going to update. We're going to make two profiles for this to work. First, we're going to duplicate the default one, and I'm going to call this HCD main. That's going to be the main profile that we use most of the time. Um, so we're going to do, honestly, we'll probably um, save that for now. Let me check. We don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. You can set any of these things however you like. I don't think there's anything Again, don't update it unless you want to deal with potentially other bugs, newer versions may or may not work. Definitely older versions won't work. We're going to be using X input. Um, the, the reliability, I've had much more reliability with X input than I've had with direct input in Horizon. I think it's part of uh, the way that the Steam mapping is done. I'm going to recommend using it, uh, the Xbox 360 setting, but obviously you can mess around with settings as you want. All right, um, now that you've got that configured, make sure your DS4 is plugged in. And we're gonna set it to HCD main for now. And now that we've got this launched and the controller is registered and it does have a configuration currently on it, and I'm gonna launch Horizon and I'm gonna speed things up. You're gonna get this every time you launch it. Just ignore that, it's fine. That's just the, you know, thinking that it knows better than you what to do with a controller. So I'm gonna launch Horizon. Um, now that we've got DS4 Windows already started, it's going to take a while to start, so I'm just going to speed right through that. Okay, so Horizon has started. We activate the window again. Load in. There we go. And it should be taking your inputs. Everything should work as you would expect. You won't have gyro aiming yet because we haven't configured that, but everything will work normally. You should be able to do your heavy attacks, your light attacks, your focus, concentration. All of these things should be working correctly. Uh, you should feel vibration when you roll. You will be getting the Xbox sprint prompts. That's just something we have to live with. It's not a big deal. But no gyro aiming. Uh, there's a lot of steps that we have to take to make that work. Okay, first of all, we're going to set the rumble to one second because sometimes the rumble will get bugged out and try to continue. So setting it to one second just means that it will never go longer than one second. Um, that doesn't interfere with anything in the game because nothing in the game sends a continuous rumble for a little second. If, it, if it's going to be rumbling a lot, it's going to be sending lots of individual rumbles. Um, we're going to change mouse sensitivity later. I don't like leaving that on. Definitely don't use mouse acceleration unless you like to suffer. Um, we're going to be using the gyro as a mouse. That's not always on. That is going to be activated by L2. 
Um, sometimes things don't trigger, so I'm just going to click that and then click that again. I like set it to 50. This is a relative scale. I like setting the dead zone to 25. And yeah, main threshold is fine. Um, you don't need it to toggle. I like using smoothing. It doesn't make a big difference. If you switch back and forth between this, it'll actually bring up the smooth weighting. Uh, I set it to the maximum because it just feels good to me. And you can actually test this right now. What you can do is you can hold L2. You should be able to see the cursor move around. You will have to figure out gyro sensitivity based on in-game. So this is how this number right here is how you're going to change if you want the gyro to be more or less sensitive in -game. Uh, vertical scale, if for some reason you want the vertical scale to be faster or slower, you can change that. I like having it one-to-one. -one. Again, Dungeon Zone 25 works for me. If you set it lower, it's going to be a little bit more twitchy and respond to subtler inputs. And if you set it higher, you're going to have to do bigger inputs to make it actually register a movement. 25 seems to be a good balance for me. Again, you don't want to toggle. Um, I don't know what this filter is, but it, it makes it a little bit less jittery and I don't feel like I'm losing any accuracy, so I use that. That's totally up to you. Um, touchpad, I'm just going to set that to control so I don't accidentally do anything with that. We're actually going to set some things to it I recommend later. Light bar to whatever color you like. These are like dead zones and output curves. Lots of lots of stuff that you can do here. Um, I You could just leave it on default if you don't want to worry about it. It's fine. And the default controls here should also be fine. We can do some things though. So first we're going to actually unbind middle mouse button. We're going to unbind right mouse button. You don't want to accidentally do those. Um, right touch, I'm going to bind that to start. And left touch, I'm going to bind that to M. So that'll take us directly to the map. Now we're actually going to unbind left and right trigger. Both of those. Left trigger is going to be right mouse. Correction, left trigger should be right mouse. Right trigger should be unbound. And we'll save that for now. So double check to make sure that nothing changed on us. Go back to Horizon, check to make sure everything works. Yeah, and this is the weird thing that happens. So if I'm holding right mouse right now, using the left trigger, and then I'm walking with the left stick, the game freaks out because it, it's trying to switch back and forth between inputs. It can do that fast, but it's not simultaneous. And so the game absolutely freaks out. It's not a good time. So we need to fix that. I'm going to go into settings. And I'm going to reset everything. So I'm going to have absolutely default settings. This is going to be your walking around sensitivity. I like to set that to absolute maximum. You're never going to aim with that, so there's no reason to not have it best. And I personally like to turn these down a little bit. This is going to be your aiming sensitivity, right? So if you want faster aiming, you can set this higher. And if you want slower aiming, you can set this lower. And this is universal to both the gyro and the joystick whenever you're aiming. Um, yeah, this is fine. Again, we're currently in keyboard mode, but if we go back, yeah, we can set these on controls. Uh, vibration, part of the reason we're doing it the way we're doing it is so that we can have vibration working correctly. And then in here, we actually do have to change one thing, and that is heavy melee. Because it uses the same button as draw the bow and, and, and shoot the arrow, you actually have to program in another way of doing heavy melee, and we're going to do that. I'm going to walk you through that. So I bind it I bind it to left alt. You can bind it to anything so long as it's not used by something else. But you're going to need to remember that key because we're going to be doing other things with it later. So left alt is an easy one. Nothing else in the game uses it as far as I know. We're going to go back here. Um, actually, before we do that, back on this screen. We're going to leave it on this screen for now, actually. Because now what we need to do is create a shift mode. So whenever you're holding L2, the whole controller is going to shift to keyboard and mouse controls. So for example, on the left stick, I'm going to set it to WASD. So up on the left stick is going to be on the shift modifier. Under L2, it's going to be W. And you're going to do these for all of the bindings. I'm not going to worry too much about trying to cut this out or anything, because you might have questions about what or why is getting bound. Left stick is getting set to WASD, so that you can walk around while aiming. And we can actually test that now real quick. So now I'm aiming with right with right stick, 
and I have the gyro working in game already. And I can walk around it. But I can't shoot or anything, that's not working, none of the other inputs work. And if I try, the game freaks out because it's still registering the DS4 inputs. So we need to fix that. So back to settings, and it's, it's helpful to bring this control mapping screen up. Not this one, but this one. And you can just switch between those by pressing a button on the DS4 or by pressing a button on the keyboard or clicking with the mouse. After you've done everything else and made it feel right to you, this is the number to change for the driver. Uh, right stick is normally aiming. We're going to set this to mouse. So you might have to worry about inverting your mouse just because some people have inverted. Look, that's something you're going to have to figure out uh, where and when you need to change that. Oop mess this up. So these need to be default actually. Um, but the shift modifiers need to be and be careful to not click on scroll up and down. It's easy to accidentally hit that especially creepy up. But that's not what you want. You don't want to actually move the mouse. And you can test this now. So we've configured that and then you can hold L2 and you'll see the gyro works. Also, if you hold that still, you'll see the mouse works. And that feels kind of slow. So this is a good opportunity to configure. In here, we have some mouse options. I like to set this to 50. That doubles the speed, the vertical scale again to one. Offset is kind of a jump. It might be hard to see, but it jumps a little bit. That's because of that. We set that to zero. It doesn't jump at all. These are gonna be a little bit trickier. So up, normally that is heel. So we look over here. Use medicine pouch. It's set to Q. So under shift modifier, when holding L2, Q. Cycling through items is Z and X. So I'm going to set this one under shift modifier to Z. And this one under shift modifier to X. Down button, that is use item. Use selected tool trap F. And if you have different bindings because you like to switch between controller you can definitely you know just use whatever bindings you've got but that's why I've got this screen up so I can see what bindings I've got. Right stick that's concentration while I mean shift. Oh and I messed that up. Shift. So now yep cool. Uh it is gonna be shift fire E triangle is gonna be space because that's jump. B is roll. Yep, dodge roll slow mount is left control. So I'm going to hop in here. Shift modifier is going to be left control. And same goes for X. X is crouch. Crouch is currently about to C. So I'm just going to set that here. Shift modifier. C. Those are all configured now. We've only got a couple more. Right bumper. Reload is the button that you use to knock another arrow. Again, R2 is going to be unbound, um, and you will see why later. Left bumper, that's weapon wheel. I don't know if you want to hold left trigger and left bumper at the same time, but you can, so we'll configure it. Weapon wheels tab. And now that's pretty much the entire controller. Um, we can add a shift modifier for this. Instead of going to be start, it's going to be escape. I think that's basically everything. So we're going to save that, and we can hop back in game. And we can test to make sure that everything so everything works, um, except for shooting. We haven't done that yet, and that's where the magic happens. So we're going to make a new profile. You should absolutely double check to make sure everything in here is exactly as you want it. Obviously, there's some things that you might need to fine tune as you play, but we're going to have two pro profiles from this point forward, and you're going to want as much parity between them as you can have, except for what I tell you to change. So that means anything you change in one profile, you're going to want to change to the same thing in the other profile. Um, so we're going to save this profile, and we're going to go to Profiles, and duplicate that profile. And this is going to be Alts. It's going to be more than just aiming. It's also going to be your heavy attacks, because they're on the same button. Now, all of that work we did, to have the shift modifiers, you can just undo that basically. On this version, on HCD alt, I'm not even gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna bind the defaults to the ones that are up there. 
and it's easy to check to make sure I've got the right one. So down button, shift modifier F, just set it to F and F. Now they're both good. Um, for example, left bumper, no, it's it's always tab. Under shift L2, it doesn't matter. You can get rid of the shift modifiers. It's not worth your trouble. And that's, that's for this profile. This is the alt profile, where everything is always in keyboard mode. That is the goal here, right? This profile, we have we not only have the shift modifier that sets everything to keyboard mode, but this entire profile should be in keyboard mode. So right touch on here should not be, it probably won't matter for you, but set them to escape. Again, you don't need to worry about the shift modifier, but I'm just leaving it there. I'll usually unbind that too, just in case I accidentally press it. So. and save. Okay, now what we're going to do is actually going to test that out while we're here. You're going to have to click on resume. Uh, it's going to feel jank. This is not how you're going to play the game. This is only a fallback that happens for a split second um, while you heavy attack or while you're actually aiming down sights, of course. So you see we actually have the keyboard prompts at the bottom right now, full time. Um, I can't, I have eight directional walking because it's WASD. All that works right now, so we know that we're good. Of course, R2 still does absolutely nothing. So I keep on promising that we're gonna do it. I think we're finally gonna do it. Uh, go back into this profile. Don't need that, thank you. We're gonna make a new action on R2. And this is gonna, you remember that button that you bound heavy attack to? In my case, it was, I bound heavy melee to alt. So whatever special, unique button that you bound that to, now's the time. Press toggle a key. Select a key. Make sure you set to toggle. Select the key that you bound heavy melee to. Releasing unload trigger. It should look like this. Call it heavy. You can call it whatever you want. Doesn't matter. It's just a name. Make sure that's enabled. Make sure it's bound to R2. Make sure it presses the same button here. It will ignore that input if you're aiming down sights, and that's why that's why this doesn't interrupt aiming down sights, because that takes priority. We're going to save that. Again, we do need to go back here. One more thing, one more thing. This is going to be set to left mouse. Finally, finally, we're binding R R2. Um, so basically, the special action always means that we're holding R2 whenever we're holding, I mean, holding left alt whenever we're holding R2, and R2 on left mouse means that we will actually perform the attack. Save that. Now this profile is finished. I'm going to switch back to the main profile and edit that one. Um, I did want to unbind this, just so I don't have to worry about that accidentally doing anything. Again, get rid of that. Save that just for now and go back in here. Um, R2 now only does one thing in this profile. It is to load a profile. That profile is going to be the alt profile, unload on trigger release. Save that. Oops, need a name. Um, just call R2, switch. Save that. I think we're done. So go back in here. We normally we have omnidirectional walking, analog walking, we can walk a little better or fast. We have vibration, all of these things work. They all interact seamlessly. We currently have the Xbox button button props, which is better than keyboard button props. Not ideal, but hey. Everything works. Jump. Crouch. We can roll through crouching, you know, we can bring up the weapon wheel. Oh, and of course heavy attacks work. That's the, um, they work perfectly. I'm holding R2 and releasing and pressing L2. And you will notice it works perfectly. And it's staying in the HCD alt profile because I am holding R2, which puts it into the HCD alt profile. Um, switching L2 keeps it in the HCD main profile. So it's all R2 that does that. Um, so we don't heavy attack when we don't mean to, and we do heavy attack when we do mean to. We can aim, we can heavy attack in series as well as she ever can. Um, we can go into and out of aiming just by 
holding and releasing L2 while holding R2, it works perfectly. Including, if we go into focus mode, you will notice our trigger is track target. It still works. It still works perfectly. And you can see it switch for just a second. There it goes. Into the keyboard and mouse version. You can see her just jitter just for a second, but that's it. There you go. I'm going to put these profiles in the description um, as a download, and they should just be drag and drop work uh, plugins. If they don't, then that's what this video is for. Hope you enjoyed. See you later.